Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I've got a ton of great emulation news for you. We're talking about the PlayStation Vita, Nintendo Switch, Pretendo, a brand new Evercade, and some ROM hacking. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about PlayStation Vita emulation on Windows, Linux, and Mac with Vita 3K. Vita 3K just had a massive breakthrough. If you download and open up the latest version of Vita 3K, head to configuration here, go into settings, then click on GPU. Resolution upscaling has been added. By default, it's set to 960 by 544, but you can upscale it all the way up to eight times which is a whopping 7680 by 4352. Now, Vita 3K is 100% free, so I will leave a link to their GitHub page in the description below. Feel free to check it out. It is updated very often. And at this point in time, 128 Vita games are listed as playable, which means you can play through them from beginning to end without any game-breaking glitches. And if you want to check out these games, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can see the list. And speaking of games, but switching systems here to the NES, there is a brand new Mega Man ROM hack out called Mega Man 1 Speed Bomber. It was just released, it features a bunch of new things like new levels, new graphics, new music, modified AI bosses and enemies, and new weapons. On top of that, Mega Man speed has been increased, as well as everything else. Overall, Mega Man Speed Bomber looks very interesting. If you like stuff like this, I'll leave a link in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Next up here, we're talking about a different type of emulation, server emulation with Pretendo. We talked about Pretendo in a previous video or two. At a high level, it's an open source, free to use server emulator for the 3DS and Wii U. If you're thinking about video game preservation, Pretendo is probably right up your alley. Well, emulation in general is probably up your alley, but Pretendo here is replicating old Nintendo servers. Now, in terms of overall progress, Pretendo is about 56% of the way there. They are making some pretty big strides forward. And I will leave a link to their Discord channel in the description below in the event that you want to reach out to that community. On top of that, for those of you wondering, Pretendo is compatible with CMU, but it is worth mentioning at this point in time, I'm not entirely sure if CMU is ready for Pretendo just yet. I think CMU has to make a few coding changes or updates in order to work with Pretendo. To be honest with you, I've got my eyes glued to Pretendo. I think it's got a ton of potential. I mean, look at the latest screenshot here. It looks awesome. Moving on now, and we're talking about the Evercade. If you're into this kind of stuff, Evercade has just announced a brand new handheld called the Evercade EXP. Looking at this right away, I am concerned about the quality of that D-pad, but I haven't tested this out yet, so I can't make that call. Anyways, this is a very interesting little product. It is a handheld that does use cartridges, and it also has a Tate mode, so you can play games in vertical mode. So if you're a fan of playing games in portrait mode or Tate mode and you like arcade shooters, you should be right at home here. And you can see the A and B buttons are already on this side, so this is set up pretty well for that. I am worried about the overall balance of this, though, considering the controls in portrait mode or Tate mode, are on the absolute bottom of this, so the bulk of the weight will be over your hands. The EXP has a high resolution 4.3 inch IPS display, has USB-C, mini HDMI out, Wi-Fi, and the battery on this lasts four to five hours. And in my opinion here, one of the big selling features of the EXP is the fact that it's compatible with the entire Evercade library. The EXP will be priced at 150 bucks and will be available this winter. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested and what are your thoughts on the price. Now, last but definitely not least, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline. Yes, we have even more updates. Super Mario Odyssey is one of those games a lot of people have been talking about. A lot of testing has been conducted in Mushroom Kingdom, but it also appears other levels are working, like Snow Kingdom. So if we take a look here at this video, Snow Kingdom is up and running. Yes, you can get in-game. Yes, some of the graphics are a little bit broken. But at the same time here, this is really impressive. On top of that, Blade Strangers is missing a few graphics here, but it is in game. And Lunar, the person who posted these screenshots was able to actually win a match. Batman the Telltale series is booting. Undertale is in game and now Hollow Knight is running with sound. Finally, we're talking about Egg on S, an emulator I don't like at all. I've gone over why I don't like it numerous times in previous videos. But despite all of that, some people still decide to pay for it. 
Someone here paid for a two years membership and they're not happy at all. This is from Reddit emulation on Android. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Uh, someone says, people, now with this update 3.0.4, I'm not able to play my games. Dragon Ball Fighters doesn't open anymore, even changing infinity of settings. I paid for two years membership. Well, that was money that you're probably not going to get back. I don't want to say you wasted it, but it kind of looks like you did. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, haul stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, and we did talk about quite a bit. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.